Amen. Come on, it's good to worship a good, good God. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. So great. So, if we haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, my name is Connor. I'm Kendall. Yes, it is. And we are super happy that you're able to be here today. And if you're joining us online, super happy for having you joining us in tuning in, whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Join um, us on the interwebs, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Um, so letting y'all know that we have game day coming up in just two weeks. Come on, make some noise. Come on, come on, come on. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, game day is a super, super fun time. Y'all are going to be able to bring your friends and please bring them. Like I said, like, please bring them because we want them. We want your friends to be able to experience God's presence in this house because we can do it here. It is going to be a great time. I am super excited. Don't Come forget, on. like I said, bring that one. Bring your friend, okay? Bring okay? your one. Bring, bring your, your one. one. And hey, if you missed it, we actually got water baptisms. They're happening yeah, we do. today and tomorrow. They're right after service. Woo! If you haven't signed up yet, so it's a little too late to make it this time, but we're going to be having them again. It's on March 6th yeah. and 7th. Yeah, it is. So you guys can sign up to be water baptized. If you go to our Starting Point students booth with your small group leader, all the information you need is right there on how to sign up, how to get involved, how to take that he next knows step and declare Jesus yeah. the Lord of your life publicly. Ooh, so cool. Yeah. So cool. That's awesome. But yeah, water baptisms are right after service, so feel free to hang out in the main lobby. You can go see our everybody from our kids all the way through our adults. Get, yeah. get baptized. Today. Awesome, awesome. Sweet. So we're going to get into our tithe verse. It is Proverbs 22, 9. It says, He who is generous will be blessed, for he gets some of his food to the poor. I want to focus on the aspect of this verse where it says, He, he who is generous. Do, we, do y'all know what generous means? If not, it's okay. Um, so I was reading in another version of this translation. It says that the Lord will bless you for if you freely give to the poor. Oh, come on. So for me, like freely give. So like you give to somebody without expectation to get something in return. So y'all, so like I ask y'all, y'all, y'all have all been given something in this house, whether it's time or whether it's money. That's two things I'm gonna focus on right now, time and money. So we've Come all get, been given some type of money that we can give back to God, just giving to God, not expecting a blessing in return in any way, but giving it to Him wholeheartedly. And we can give Him our time, 10 minutes a day, 10 to 15 minutes a day, we can give back to Him, not expecting or wanting anything back for what He's going to do in our day but he will bless it. So I pray, I'm, I'm real quick, if you have a tithe in this house, a money tithe, you can go and put it right over here in this bucket. It is a way that you can, like I said, give back to God and he can do immensely above what you could ever think or imagine with it. So come if you on, could bow your heads and close your eyes and we'll pray for over our tithe. God, thank you for allowing us to be in this place. God, I thank you for blessing us with things that we could have never even known that we needed, like time and money. God, I pray that whatever we give back to you, God, is freely for, to you, not asking or wanting anything in return. It is all for you wholeheartedly, and we love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Well, hey, guys, we're about to head into the message part of our service. And, yeah, man, yeah. Connor, dude. We got a doozy today. It's going to be a great one. It's going to be real, it's real be a good. good one. Well, hey, we got Pastor Alyssa Archer yeah, speaking. Come on, can you guys make some noise come on, for Miss Alyssa. Come on, come on, come on. Man, she's such an incredible woman of God. Yes, I'm so is. blessed just to get to know her, to be able to call her uh, my friend, and just be able to do ministry with her, man. I know she's studied up. I know she is ready to mm -hmm. pour in to you today. So I encourage you, man. We always say this every week. Note takers are history makers. Y'all. So go ahead, take notes, lean in and take a look at this. Yeah, come on. Whoa. <laughs> okay, wait. Wait, let's try that one more time. How are you guys? Okay, one more time. Let me just hear you shout as loud as you can. One, two, three, go. 
There we go. I need some energy from you guys today, but I'm so glad to be with you all. And for those of you who don't know me, like they said, my name is Alyssa Archer. And Ben and I, we get the privilege of pastoring you all, and it is so much fun to do so. And if you are new in here today, whether you're here in person or you are online, I just want to welcome you personally and let you know that you are already loved and you belong. And so guys, I'm really stoked for today's message because the next few weeks, we have a little series going on where we're going to be talking about the power of God. Who wants more power in their life? Let me see your hands. Who wants more of God's power in your life? If you're not raising your hand, I'm really concerned right now. We all should want more of God's power in our life. And I want you guys to know, and I want you all to look at me real quick because I'm talking to each and every single one of you in here today, that I don't care that you're in middle school and neither does God. Because the Holy Spirit that's in you is the same Holy Spirit that was with Jesus. The same Holy Spirit that is residing within you is the same Holy Spirit that was with Paul, that is with Pastor John, that is with Pastor Ben and myself. And so you guys don't have a miniature Holy Spirit. You have the same Holy Spirit. And so when I talk about the power of God, I want you guys to get excited. Because each and every single one of you, my boys over here, my dudes over here, my dudes over here, I want you to know that you are called. God has called each and every single one of you, my dudes in the front. God has called you to lay your hands on the sick and see them healed. He's called some of you in here to be pastors. He's called some of you in here to be business workers who will lead so many people to Jesus. And so I want you guys to get pumped because this message is for you. It is not just for adults. I want you to get excited. So let's go ahead and bow our heads and let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much that we get to talk about you. We thank you that we get to be in your presence. And God, today, I just speak that people in here experience your love for the first time. And I thank you, Father God, for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today, the topic is grace. And the title of the message is, It Is Finished. Turn to your neighbor and say, It Is Finished. It Is Finished. And so when I started to study this topic, I got a little overwhelmed because if you've ever read all the scriptures on grace, there's a lot and there's so much to grace. And so I'm going to do my best to give you a brief definition of what grace is. Grace is the favor of God, meaning you get special treatment from God. It's his kindness, but it's also his power flowing through you to do things that you could never do on your own strength. Not only is it to lay your hands on the sick and see them healed, but it's also to pass that math class that you've always struggled with. It's also to be able to talk to people when you've always struggled or maybe you have a stutter or maybe you're super shy. That is God's grace working through you to be able to do things you can't do in the natural. But guys, it's a gift. It's a gift. Grace is a gift. You cannot earn it. We don't deserve it. You don't have to work for it. But I want you to know that you already have God's grace. You already have God's grace as a son, as a daughter of Christ. And you have it because he loves you. But my favorite definition of grace, and if you're taking notes, write this down. My favorite definition is God's grace is the finished works of Jesus. It's the finished works of Jesus. So everything that Jesus died on the cross for us for, his healing, salvation, restoration, covering our sins, right relationship with God, all of these things, that is God's grace. It was all bundled up, wrapped in a present, handed over to you and I, and it's called grace. And so I want you guys to turn to John 19, verse 28. And this is the Passion Translation. And it says this. Jesus knew that his mission was accomplished. And this is Jesus. He's already on the cross. He's already hanging on the cross. Jesus knew that his mission was accomplished. And to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting nearby. 
So they soaked a sponge with it and put it on the stalk of hyssop and raised it to his lips. When he had sipped the sour wine, he said, It is finished, my bride. Then he bowed his head and surrendered his spirit to God. And you might be thinking, why are you going back to when Jesus died on the cross when we're talking about grace? And I wanted to take you back to this moment thousands of years ago because this is the moment that grace was earned. This was the only thing that could earn God's love, his favor, his protection, healing, salvation. This was what earned God's grace. And so when you think of grace, I want you to think of this moment because there's nothing that we could do to replicate what Jesus did on the cross because we already have it. Say, I already have it. Say it louder. Say, I already have it. You already have grace. And so we need to understand grace so that we can live in it. And so my first point for you guys today is that Jesus obtained it. I live by it. Jesus obtained it. I live by it. So when I was in high school, we didn't have iPads. We barely had cell phones. We had what you would call a flip phone. Do you got, who knows what a flip phone is? Okay, I just wanna make sure you understand what I'm saying. So we had flip phones. We did not have tablets or iPads. And I remember whenever I was a junior or a senior, this thing came out, it's called a Kindle. Do you guys know what a Kindle is? Okay, okay, does anybody have a Kindle? Anybody in here? Okay, so. That was, that was like the big technology. And guys, I was so excited for this Kindle. I don't even know why, because you know what? I never read in high school. Like, I never read my assignments. Don't do that. I didn't read for fun. I didn't read for school. Like, I didn't read, but I wanted the Kindle. And so I remember I nonchalantly had mentioned it to my mom one day, told her I wanted it. But you know, I was in high school. I had a car. I had my own job. And so I got impatient and I decided, well, I'm just going to go buy one. So I go out, I buy one, I bring it home, and I'm super excited. I take it home, I show my family, expecting them to be as excited as I was. But when I showed my mom, I saw the look of disappointment on her face. Because what I didn't know was that my mom had already bought me one. Christmas was only a couple weeks away, and so she had bought me one, and she was so disappointed that I went out and spent my own money on something that she had already bought me. You see, she did not want me to spend my own money that I had worked hard for to buy something that she had already bought me. She just wanted to give it to me because she loved me. And I think that so many times we do this with grace. Grace. Right, so like we all already have God's love, but there's so many times, I know I've done this, there's so many times where God's already given us his love, but we think, oh, I need to work for his love. So we go over and we flip through our Bible and we're like, I'm gonna read my Bible every day for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna pray and then I'm gonna go to prayer at church and then I'm gonna serve at church. And these are all really great things. But when we are doing them, to earn the thing that we already have, it breaks God's heart. It breaks his heart. And so just like me with the Kindle and my mom, God's already given you his love. He's already given you his mercy. He's already given you everything that you could ever need to walk this earth. And so he's asking you and telling you that you don't need to do anything to earn it because his son was already sacrificed on the cross. And so whenever we try to add things to what Jesus did, what we're saying is, Jesus, you weren't enough. When we try to work or earn or do things to obtain the thing that we already have, we're saying, Jesus, you weren't enough. Jesus, what you did wasn't good enough, and so I need to add things to it. But let me tell you that you are just spinning your wheels because you already have everything that you could ever need through Jesus. It's already yours. And so if you remember anything today, I want you to remember that it, grace is already yours. And you might be thinking, but I don't feel like God loves me. 
I don't feel like I'm his favorite. I don't feel like I'm special to him. The thing about grace is you just have to trust God. You have to trust that what Jesus did was enough. You have to trust that what the Bible says is true. That even though your feelings might say, I'm not powerful, I'm not loved, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, that you must know that what the Bible says is more true than your feelings, what the Bible says is more true than your circumstance, than your thoughts, than what's going on in the world around you. If the Bible says that you have it, then you have it. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're loved, guess what, you're loved. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're healed, guess what, you're healed. Because he already said that he gave it to us, so that means that we have it. But the thing about trust is it's hard to trust somebody that you don't spend time with. I mean, I'm not going to let somebody watch my kids that I don't know or that I don't trust. That'd be crazy. But the people that I trust are the people that I've spent time with, that I've gotten to know. And you can do that same thing with God. You can spend time with him every day and get to know his goodness, get to know his love. And in that, you will learn to trust him. The second thing is that his grace is for me. Say, my, his grace is for me. Say it again. Say, his grace is for me. I know sometimes that it's hard to think that God might love us, that we're forgiven, that our sins, that our weaknesses, our flaws are already covered. But his grace is for you. So when I was in college, I dated this guy, and he seemed like he was awesome, and our first three months of the relationship were great. But then things started to get toxic. I crossed boundaries that I should have never crossed, and he started to treat me in a way that he should have never treated me. I got, became depressed. I started to eat way less than I should have because I was convinced that I was fat. There was one point that I barely spoke because he had convinced me that I was too dumb. And so I thought every time I talked that there was no point in it, so I just kept my mouth shut. And so this relationship, during this time, I developed anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and I felt so low, so less than. I had no more confidence. I was just completely insecure. The person who I used to be was gone. But the other thing that was devastating during this time is that even though I continued to go to church, I didn't really have a relationship anymore with Jesus. I stopped spending time with him. I distanced myself from him. Because I didn't think that I was worthy enough to go to him. I didn't think I was good enough. And so I just kept my distance. And so this relationship continued too long, but then finally it ended. But it took a while for the healing to begin. And then one day, I felt like God was telling me to read Psalm 18. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to read a portion starting in verse 19. And it says this, it says, his love broke open the way and he brought me into a beautiful broad place. He rescued me because his delight is in me. He rewarded me for doing what's right and staying pure. Good people will taste your goodness, Lord. And to those who are loyal to you, you love to prove that you are loyal and true. And for those who are purified, they find you always pure. And while I read that, I felt like God was telling me that he saw me as pure he saw me as loyal. He saw me as good. And he delighted in me. But guys, I was completely baffled. Because in the natural, I was anything but pure. I definitely wasn't good. And I definitely was not loyal. I had backed away from him during a difficult time instead of stepping into him. So I could not be defined as any of those words. And then he ended it with that he delighted in me. But see, guys, this is God's grace. Because even though in the natural I looked one way, God's word called me something else. And so I don't know what weakness or flaw or sin that you're stuck in. But even though that might be what you see in the natural, God's word says something else. And that is grace. Grace covers our sins. It covers our weaknesses. It covers our flaws. It gives us abilities that we shouldn't have on our own. That is God's grace. 
And so I don't know what thing you might define yourself as, what struggle that you have. Maybe you don't think you're beautiful enough or that you're talented enough. Or maybe you don't feel seen or heard or noticed at home. Maybe you feel like you're stupid. And I don't know what things people have called you, but I'm here to tell you today that God's love is enough to cover all of that. God's love is big enough to cover your struggles, to cover your doubts, and to cover your sins. And if I could have the worship team come back out. God's love is big enough to cover all of that today. And so we're going to reread John 19. But where it says, my bride, I want you to insert your name. Because my bride is actually what he refers to as the church. The church is his bride. And so literally 2,000 years ago, he was talking to you today. He knew that you would be listening to this message right now. And instead of just talking to the whole church, he's talking to you. Because his grace is for you. And so it says, Jesus knew that his mission was accomplished. And to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting nearby. So they soaked a sponge with it and put it on the stalk of hyssop and raised it to his lips. When he had sipped the sour wine, he says, it is finished, my bride. Then he bowed his head and surrendered his spirit to God. So guys, walk away today knowing that it's finished. You don't have to work for his love. You don't have to work for anything that Jesus gave you. It's already yours. And so I'm going to do two prayers today. The first one is for those of you who maybe you already know Christ, but you feel like you've been trying to earn God's love. And then the second one is for those of you who want to give your life to Jesus. So if you could all just bow your heads and close your eyes. Please don't be talking to your neighbors at at this time. But for those of you in here who you've been trying to earn God's love, because maybe you didn't realize that it was already yours. Maybe you didn't realize that you already had everything that you needed. But today, you just want to walk in his love. You don't want to try to strive. You don't want to try to earn. You just want to walk in his love. If that's you, I just want you to quickly raise your hand. This is between you and God, just to acknowledge a change in path. Awesome. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So if that was you or... Maybe you wish it was you and you didn't raise your hand. I just want everybody to repeat after me. Say, Father God, I repent of trying to earn your grace. But today, I walk confidently in what Jesus did for me. In Jesus' name, amen. And then one more prayer, guys. Keep your head bowed. For those of you in here today, who have maybe never given your life to Christ. And what that means is that you're saying yes to living a life for Jesus. And you're heaven bound. You know that you're going to heaven. If you guys have never done that, if you've never given your life to Christ, if you've never said yes to Jesus, but you wanna give your life, your heart to him today and start living a life for him, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Anybody else? You want to say yes? Saying yes to you today, Jesus. Okay, for everybody who raised their hand, let's all say this together. Say, Father God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross 
for my sins. And today, I make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's give it up.